Shabbat Shalom. Good evening. Welcome to our evening uh, Shabbat service. I am Rabbi or the Chili Cobb, Vincent P. Adams. I'm co-founder of Vets I Am, along with my lovely wife, Navia Leslie Adams. And we just want to say Shabbat Shalom and, and welcome. This is our evening uh, service this Saturday afternoon or Saturday uh, Shabbat service of, what is it, uh, January 5th, 2013. And I just want to welcome you. We're glad to have you, whether you're here in person or if you are watching uh, on Ustream or even watching the recording. Uh, before I get to it, I just want to uh, do a little housekeeping. Um, next Shabbat, next Friday, January 11th, we will be coming to you from our new church or new facilities located at 728 West Main Street in Jinx, Oklahoma. That's 728 West Main Street, Jinx, Oklahoma. 74037 is the zip code. And let me give you a couple of uh, web pages to look at. For some of our outreach ministries, we have axtraining.weebly.com. We have edsim.weebly.com. Uh, you can see them. Uh, can they focus on these okay? Okay. And we also, let me give you one other website, thedominionteam.com, T-H-E, D as in dominate, O-M-I-N-I-O-N, T, T-E-A-M, Dot com, the Dominion Team dot com. And you can find out information about our various uh, outreaches at those uh, websites that I just gave you. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can email us at tree underscore of underscore life at sbcglobal.net. That's T R E E underscore O F underscore life, L-I-F-E, at S-B-C, Sam Boy Cat, global, just like a globe, G-L-O-B-A-L dot net, tree underscore of underscore life at S-B-C global dot net. Our mailing address is 8177 South Harvard Avenue, 8177 South Harvard Avenue, number 606. 8177 South Harvard Avenue, number 606, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74137. That's T U L S A, comma, OK for Oklahoma, 74137. Phone number, area code 918. 955-7971. That's 918-955-7971. Okay, be able to get in contact with us if you'd like, if you have questions. We love it. Um, next week is a big week. Beginning January 7th, we will start our AX training classes at the new location. Classes will be from 4 p.m. 4 p.m. in the evening to 8 o'clock uh, at night, Monday through Thursday, and we will have our service at the regular time of 7 p.m. Friday evening and 9 a.m. Saturday morning and 1 p.m. Saturday afternoon and 4:30 p.m. Uh, will be our final Shabbat service uh, Saturday evening. Uh, next Friday is uh, January 11th. It is also Rosh Kadesh, so we will have our Rosh Kadesh service uh, coinciding with our inaugural service at our new location. And we're also going to have a star party because it's the beginning of the month and we sight the moon and we have a very uh, sophisticated telescope with its own internal GPS system that can track the stars the, and the planets. And so come on out and 
uh, learn a little bit about astrology as astronomy and astrology as well as we um, celebrate uh, Rosh Kadesh, the, the new moon. Okay. Oh, also, we have another outreach um, called our Movement and Meditation Course. It's just to facilitate healing. Remember, we're healing and deliverance ministry. And that will start Friday, February 1. Friday, February 1st at 5 p.m. And then uh, Saturday morning at 7 a.m. And Sunday morning at 7 a.m. And Monday morning at 7 a.m. at our new location. So uh, be on the lookout for that. We'll have some things up on the website in the next couple of days about the movement and meditation uh, classes. Uh, quite interesting. It all ties in. Okay. Well, let's get to. Um, we have been really getting into some very heavy material uh, just before the the week of uh, December 7th. We were really hitting it pretty hard and uh, some very deep material. Then we uh, took two weeks off due to uh, two deaths in my immediate family it required me to uh, travel out of town for an extended stay to handle my late brother's estate and attend the funeral of my, uh, my aunt. So we, uh, December 7th and December 14th, we were not broadcasting. We were away uh, in Detroit those two weeks. And so when I got back and, you know, you, you want to kind of pick up where you left off and try to regain that momentum, but you know, Holy Spirit kind of said, take it easy. So what we decided to do was um, introduce you to the, the actual Hebrew language itself, the actual language and the Isle of Faith, the Hebrew alphabet. We have been talking about it, its spiritual qualities, what it consists of, what it is uh, on a highly spiritual level. Uh, but we hadn't really uh, dealt with it from a practical viewpoint. And so we, next past couple of weeks, we've been doing that in the form of actual Hebrew lessons. And this is the fifth lesson, and I would say the fifth and final lesson. Uh, and what I mean by that, of course, you can't really learn Hebrew in just five lessons. But these five lessons that we have, uh, the fifth lesson being today, that we have recorded for you, you will be able to read and pronounce Hebrew. These are the five foundation or basic lessons that will enable you to read and pronounce Hebrew. Guaranteed. There's nothing else you need to to know or learn about reading and pronouncing and saying Hebrew that's not in these five lessons. So, you know, this will make it a lot easier for you to track with us through the ceremonies. We have a Torah ceremony in Hebrew. You, you'll be able to read uh, and pronounce the words and it'll help with the lessons. It, it, makes, it, it makes it real. This helps you, you know, you're not uh, when you get this material under your belt, you're not a, you know, you're not a bystander. You're not a spectator anymore. You, you, you can really participate on a much, on a much deeper level, knowing this. And of course, we're going to, you know, take this information and we're going to perfect it and we're going to keep building on it. You know, this is just our, our foundation, you know. We'll build uh, from here. We will continue to uh, have a, a Hebrew lesson probably every Shabbat, or we might skip some, but uh, we'll be pretty regular with these lessons so that you can really become proficient in Hebrew and get the practice.
because after this, it just takes practice. Yeah, and building a uh, building a vocabulary. You know, the only way you can be, you know to learn Hebrew, you have to you have to build a vocabulary. You know, it's just plain, no shortcuts or tricks. It's just plain memorization. Same way you learn English. You learn a few words here, you learn a few words there. The more you are involved in the language, the more your vocabulary will build and you will be not only reading and pronouncing Hebrew, you'll, oh, you'll know what this word means. You'll be able to read and understand. So after these five basic lessons, it's just a matter of you sitting down and putting the time in. Sit down and read the Hebrew. You know, and, and, and learn the words. Not, not too hard to do. If you're just willing to put the time in. And since we have recorded we rec these five lessons, at your own pace, you, you can refer back to the five lessons as often as you like until you really get it down and get it a part of you. Just keep going back over these five lessons over and over and over and over again. And when you get all the rules down and you're practicing those rules on a regular basis, you'll find you can just sit down and read through Hebrew with no problem. And then when you begin to recognize and remember the words that you're saying, it, it just, you know, your speed. I remember when I first started reading my prayers in Hebrew. Boy, the first night was so hard. And the second night was just a little better. Third night was just a little bit better. And then like fourth, fifth night, I mean, it was every day, it was just better and faster and smoother. Didn't do anything different from the first night or the last night. It's just a practice, just doing it. You just get better and you'll see it day by day. You'll notice and see the improvement day day by day it'll just get better 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 and better immediately i guarantee i guarantee you okay but enough with that we have our final basic lesson the fifth lesson um hopefully you've got the email and you have uh downloaded the pages from our website Okay, if you have it, take a little time and go do that now, and you'll be able to follow along. But uh, everybody to turn to page 13. At the top of the page, on the left, it says introduction. On the right, it says the Gesh and syllables. That page that says the Gesh and syllables. It doesn't say 13. I'm just letting you know. We don't have that part on our page. You don't have the number. Okay, it doesn't say it doesn't say thirteen on mine either. Okay. Okay. But it's actually page thirteen, titled the Gesh and Syllables. Okay. A the Gesh, let's explain what a the Gesh is. A the Gesh is a, a little dot that will appear uh, right in the middle of a, a Hebrew letter or Hebrew, you know, a consonant. Okay, now you have to be careful. Remember, a vav, when it when it is being used as a verb, is caught not a verb, but it's being used as a vowel. The letter vav, when it's being used as a vowel, has a little dot right on the top of it, and we call that a holom vav. And remember, that little dot right on the top of the vav can also appear on the top of other letters as well. Are you paying attention? Or are you talking amongst yourselves? I'm going to pay attention to you, sir. Okay. Where did I say you will find a little dot? Right above. And where else? In the middle. No. Well, I did say that. Where else? Oh. I said you will find that dot that you see at the top of the letter vav, mm -hmm. which makes it a holom vav or a vav. Right. Okay. You will also find that dot 
at the top of other letters as well. When it, when it also becomes a vowel. So if you see a dot at the top of a letter, a Hebrew letter, it's a vowel, not a vowel, it's a vowel. Okay? And you treat it like a long O. Remember, a hole in vowel is a long O sound. Right. If you have a lamet and there's a dot at the top, it is, it's just like a hole in vowel. It is pronounced like a long O. Okay? So anytime the dot is at the top, that means that letter and that dot is a vowel. The whole letter and the whole dot is one vowel. It's no longer a lamet. Okay? It is being used as a vowel and pronounced with a long O sound. Okay, so when you see a vowel and you see a dot above it, it's not a big etch. Just call it a dot. You know, it's a whole in vowel. If you see that dot on top of another letter, it's just like a whole in vowel. It's being used as a vowel. If you go back to page six where the vowels are, you'll see that. When you see the holem, you see it. You see the whole vowel there, or it says X with the dot on it, usually to the top left. And you see my note there says no difference in sound and meaning. Those are, do you see it? 0 0.12, page 6. The vowel. It's page six, zero point one two. You don't have the pages. Just go to zero point one two. Top it. You do have it. You, we went over it during that lesson. Well, that's real smart not to put it in your printout. We went over it. You looked at it. I don't know how you lost it. We when we did that lesson on the vowels, you were looking at it all day long. So what you did with it from, no, 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 it had, let me see your hand out. You have it out of order. Really? Yes. It says introduction Hebrew vowels. You you got it as the last. Well, the last one we had it as a case. I don't know. You got it out of order here. That's why I told you zero point one two to go through and look. I know you had it because we, we went over it and you were looking at it. At 0 0.12, you see, you see I said my note says no difference in the sound and the meaning. Okay, you have to study this. Okay, so a dot can appear at the top of the Hebrew letters, the consonants. When the dot appears at the top, it's being used as a vowel, particularly if it is the letter vav. It's a hole in vav. If it's on top of another Hebrew letter, it is just called a hole. Yeah. But it has the same meaning and usage as a hole in vav. Okay? Now, when you another place where you will see a dot is in the middle or just to the left of the Hebrew letter Vav. When you see that, what is it? Sure. And what sound does it make? That's a long vowel, double O. Okay, double O sound. Long vowel, double O sound. Yeah. 
It's called a shurik. But you only see the shurik, you have to have the letter Vav for, for it to be a shurik. You understand? You have to have the Vav. Okay. You have to have the letter Vav there, just to the left of the letter Vav, very close, just to the left, in the middle, will be a dot. And that means you're using the Vav in that dot as a vowel called a shurik which makes a long double O sound, like cool, okay? When you have the dot at the top of the letter Vav, it's a whole involved, and it has a long O sound, like Rho. If you have that dot at the top of, say, a Lamed or any other letter, it is still a long O sound, like Rho. It's being, it, means, it means that letter has been transformed into a vowel rather than a letter or a consonant. Okay, I guess that I said that clear enough and many uh, enough times, so you can just play this um, recording over and over again if you're having problems picking that up. Okay, so when you see it, the dot in those uh, two places at the top of a letter, you know it's being used as a vowel, a whole. If you see it in the middle of a vowel, it's being used as a vowel, the shirt. Now, the other places that you may see a dot is up under the letters themselves. Under the letters themselves, you know, the various dots and dashes that we've been going on. If you see one dot up under the letter, that's a here. If you see two dots up under the up under the letter, that's a seri. These are vowels. These are the names of vowels. One dot is a here up under the letter. Two dots is a seri up under the letter. If you see three descending dots, like in a stair step, we know that that is a, a kibbutz. If you see like an inverted triangle of three dots. That's a Seagull. So those are the other places where you will see uh, dots up under the letters. Okay? And when you see them up under the letters, oh, you know that if you have two dots right up under each other, that's a Shiva or a Swap. Okay? So whenever they are up under the letter, it's a vowel. Whenever you see a dot, one dot, Above a letter, it's a vowel. Whenever you see a dot in the middle of the letter vav, it's a vowel called a shirk. Okay, everybody got that rule. Now, there is something called a degesh. When you see a dot in the middle of a letter, it is called a degesh. When you see a dot in the middle of a letter, it's called a degesh. Okay? It's not a vowel. Let me, okay. Let's read point three one. The six letters, bait, gimbal, dollar, cough, pay, top. We call those six letters begad, capet letters. And they may have a dot in the middle. These six letters may have a dot in the middle. This is called a weak degesh or a degesh lean in. In the begad capet letters, it is called a weak degesh or a degesh lean in. And they a degesh lean in always occurs in these letters, always occurs, occurs in the begad capet letters at the beginning of a word. Let's read that one more time. The six letters, bait, gimbal, dollar, cough, pay, top, the begad capet letters, may have a dot in the middle. This weak to guess or the guess lean A always, cur always occurs in these letters 
at the beginning of a word. Okay? In the middle of a word, it occurs only when no vowel precedes it. For example, the guest line occurs in the letter bait at the beginning of the word bait yo ta and in a medial position in cough in the word tav bait cough yod noon head. Okay? Now Let's look at that one more that read through that one more time. Because it can get a little hair. It can get a little. Those of you who have already looked at lesson four and saw how confused everyone was with that. Uh, this one can be hair. It's not that hard, but it's just a little, you just have to keep it straight in your head. The begat can pat letters. Can anybody tell me? When you have a the guest lean A or weak the guest in a big to pat letter, what does it do to that letter? It balances it or strengthens it. No. Tell me exactly what it does to a big to pat letter. Bait, gimbal, dollar, big to pat. <laughs> what does it be guess? In a begad compat letter, do to that letter. It would change how it sounds. It changes how it sounds, right? Excuse me. What does it do to the way it sounds? Like I know, bay. It changes it without it. Um, with bay, without any gas, it would make it bad. Okay, bay. In the letter bait, if it doesn't have a begad, it's pronounced vet. A v sound. If it has it to guess, it's bet, a B sound. So as we say, it hardens the letter. It hardens the sound of the letter. And that only happens in begad to pet letters, where the sound is hardened. Okay? Let me read you some of my notes here. The, the gasoline name only appears in begad to pet letters. Such as bait, gimbal, dollar, cough, pay, top. When the guest is absent, the sound of those letters change from in bait, from bait to vet, from the G sound in gimbal to a GH sound, like a gas. Instead of good, it becomes a GH sound, like a gas, A G H A S T. From a D sound in dollar, to a DH sound, like the, the, TH, DHT, it sounds like the TH and the, the a DA sound. In cough, the letter cough, it changes it from a K sound to a CH sound, like ch, ch, or Bach. In pay, it changes it from a, a P sound, in, you know, in pay, to a pH sound or F, might as well say F, an F sound, from pay to fit. Okay? That's without the digest. In Tav, it changes it from a T sound to a TH sound, from like toy to thin. So that's what a digest does inside of a begad to pet letter. Big gimbal dollar, pay cough, and top, or cough, pay, cough, pay, top. It changes the sound to a harder sound. Without it, it changes the sound to a softer sound. Let me go through that example one more time. The letter bait with a digesh is pronounced like a B. B as in boy, bait. Without the digest, it is pronounced vet, a V sound, V as in vigor. In the letter gimel, it changes the G sound 
Uh, if it has a degas, it has a G sound, like good. If it does not have the degas, it has a GH sound, as in aghast. Okay? The letter Dalit with a degas has the D sound, as in dog. Without the degas, it is a DH sound, like in dove. Duh. Okay? Sulfur sound. In the letter cough, it has the K sound, like in king. Without the degas, it has a CH sound, as in bach, B A C H, bach. Okay? Or chi. In the letter pay, with the degas, it has the P sound, as in Paul. Without a degas, it has an F sound, the fe, fe, or uh, pastor changes to uh, felt from P to F. In the letter Tav, with the degas, it has the T sound. Without the degas, it has the T A sound. That we call this a degas lean A. A degas lean A. And they only occur in a degas lean A will only occur in a begat capet letter at the beginning of a word. Degesh lean A only occurs in begat capet letters at the beginning of the word. The six letters, the six begat capet letters may have a dot in the middle. This weak degesh or degesh lean A always occurs in these letters at the beginning of a word. In the middle of a word, it occurs only when no vowel precedes. So it can occur in the middle of a word, a degesh lean A, but no vowel can precede it. No vowel can come before it. If a vowel, it doesn't happen, okay? And then it gives a couple of examples of, of words and, and shows you uh, what those words will look like that we have here. Okay, there is an exception. If the word preceding the word now, not the letter, remember just we just said um, it occurs at the beginning of a word, the gasoline A in the big act of pet letters. In the middle of a word, it occurs only when no vowel precedes it, meaning the letter before it had, doesn't end, you know, have a vowel in it or on it. Exception. If the word preceding the begat capet letters ends with an open syllable, there is no degas. And it gives an example there. Because the word preceding it ended in an open syllable, meaning that it, in, it ended with a vowel. So it's almost the same rule, but it applies to the word preceding it not the letter, okay? It says, most letters may take a dot called a strong degas or degas forte. Degas lean A only appears in begat capet letters. De degas forte can appear in almost any letter. Most letters may take a dot called a strong degas or a degas forte. The degas forte indicates the doubling of the letter. In transliteration, the letter is written twice. If a vowel immediately precedes the degas, it is a degas forte. If a vowel immediately precedes the letter with a degas in it, it is a degas forte. For example, in the word Shema, we have the Hebrew letter. We have a sheen with a kumatz under it. 
Then we have the letter Mem, also with a chromox under. And you see the, the, the guess in the middle, the dot in the middle of the letter Mem. And then we have Hey. Okay, do we see that? Yep. Okay, Sheen, Mem, Hey. The Sheen has a chromox under it. The Mem has a chromox under it, as well as the guess in the middle. And then the last letter of this word is Hey. And it's pronounced Sham Ma. Okay, notice that the final hey is silent. Remember, hey, when hey is at the end of a word, it is silent, unless it has a dot in it called a mappy. Not in the guess, no, but a mappy. Then you pronounce it. That's the signal to pronounce final hey. Normally, when hey is at the end of a word, you do not pronounce it unless it has a dot in the middle called a mapping. Now you have to go back to the previous lessons and see that. Now you see how everything is kind of coming together here. Okay, notice we spell that word out S-H-A-M-M-A. -M -M -A. We have three letters, but we, we, we spell it out with a double M there. S-H-A-M-M-A. -M -M -A. When you would write this letter out, or when you pronounce it. Let me give you a, another exception to the rule that I gave you earlier. Remember I told you whenever there's a dot above a letter, it's being used as a holo. Uh -huh. As you can see here, there's a sheen, the letter sheen there. That's the, only That's the only letter, you know, exception to that rule. If you, if you see a sheen, it is either going to have a dot on the right at the top or a dot on the left at the top. If the dot is on the right, you pronounce it S-H sound, sheen, S-H. Okay? If the dot's on the left, you pronounce it with just the S sound, like sin. On the left, sin. On the right, S-H, sheen. Okay? It's not being used as a verb. The only exception to the rule that I mentioned earlier about being on the dot, uh, at the dot being at the top, and the final hey. If you have a dot in a, in a final hey, then it's a mappy, and it just means pronounced final hey. Okay, now let's look at that. Someone tell me. Let's divide it into a syllable. Remember, when we divide a word, uh, a Hebrew word, into its syllables, you start at the end of the word. Remember that Hebrew is read from right to left, so that means that the end is on the left. So you start at the end of the word, on the left, going to the right, you find the first syllable. Or find the first, you find... Well, you can you can find the first syllable, but you find the first vowel. In this word, Shema, Shema, where is the first vowel? What letter is it up under? Okay, now. What's the rest of that rule say? How do you find you find you find the, the syllable by starting on the left at the end of the word, going to the right, you find the first vowel and the consonant that precedes it, and that's your first syllable. So what is the consonant that precedes this shema? I mean that precedes this vowel chromatis. Yeah. That precedes it? Sheen. That means comes before it. Yeah. Okay, what is it? Hmm? No, I said I said we want to find the first syllable. Okay. 
again. Stop taking up for them. They can speak. If they said it the first time, they can okay, say it the second time. You guys speak up. Okay. Let's start over. Okay, we remember how to find a syllable. Okay, someone tell me the first step in finding a syllable in a Hebrew word. You just start at the end and work your way to the beginning by first, like, yeah, I think, find the first vowel at the end. You find the first vowel. So what's the first vowel? Kamat. Kamat. Then it says you have to find the first consonant that precedes that first vowel. What's the first consonant that precedes that vowel? Mem. 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 Okay. So tell me what it, tell me what does the first syllable consist of that we found? Mem, kumat, and hey. Mem, kumat, and hey. Okay. Now, find the next syllable. Kumat. Kumat. What is the first consonant that precedes it? Sheen. Sheen. Now tell me, what does that syllable, the second syllable that you just found, what does that syllable consist of? Sheen, kumat. No. Can we say it? Sheen, Go ahead. Sheen, kumat, and mem. Because you double the the mem because it has a kumat there. I mean a degesh in the middle. It doubles. So you would actually, in your mind, move that mem over to the left and put another mem right in front of it. So that that word actually is sheen kumat main mem so is the is that syllable closed or open closed okay so that's why you would pronounce this word sham s h a m and then you would also pronounce it ma M A. Otherwise, if without the W, this word would be pronounced Shema. Shema. Sh S H A. You hear it? Shema. Right. That's the wrong way. The right way is sham because you double that letter mem. Sham ma. Shema. Shema. You sound out that M at the end of the syllable, and you pronounce that M at the beginning of the next syllable. It changes everything. Changes that changes everything in terms of how you pronounce that word and how you break it up into syllables. Okay. Now it says when divide when dividing syllables, note that the guest forte indicates double thereby making the first syllable a closed syllable because that doubling is going to put another letter mem there without a vowel under it without a vowel under it so the kumats follows the original letter with the degesh in it the vowel, you know, if you double it, where does the kumat go? You see, you see how you can you can make a mistake if you don't do it properly. You have the letter, you, you have the letter mem there, with the degesh in it, kumat up under it. If you're going to double it, what if I take the the letter mem with the kumat under it? And, and move it to the right so that I have sheen, kumat, mem, mem, kumat, mem, hey. That would be wrong. Okay? That would be really goofy. Okay? You would, be pronoun you would pronounce it then, sha, ma, 
Shamam. Shamat Shamam. It you will be you will you will pronounce it M A Shamam. It will be Shamam. Because you will you, the first syllable will be S H Sheen for Sheen and A for the Kumas. So it will be Sha. And then the next syllable will be Mem and Kumat, which is M A. So it'll be Sha Ma. Oh, no, it would be, the next syllable would be M-A-M, Shaman. Instead of Shamma, it would be Shaman. Or if you don't do any doubling, it would be Shama. So you, you, you have three possibilities there, and only one is right, of how to pronounce that and... Yes, and say it correctly and divide it into syllables correctly. Okay. So whenever you double, whenever you double a letter, the original letter that you see that has the vowel up under it becomes the beginning of the new of the new syllable. Okay. You want to see that? Yep. Now let's go back and look at some of the other rules, what it says. Okay, most letters may take a, a dot called a strong guess. The guess for the indicates the devil on the letter. And transliteration is written twice. We have that, okay. Um, for example, the guess line occurs in the very beginning of the word and in the middle of the word. It was... If the word for scene ends and open soon, there is no to guess. There's something I'm, I'm looking for here. We just said, do we how it occurs at the beginning of the word in the middle? In the middle of a word, it occurs, oh, yeah, here's what I'm looking for. Back up to point three one. In the middle of a word, it occurs only when no vowel precedes it. Now they're talking about it, the guess lean in. Okay, something in my notes I'm looking at, I'm remembering so Let me read from my notes now. The guest forte can appear in, it can, it can appear in any letter except the gutturals. Okay, anybody remember what the gutturals are? The four, gut, the four gutturals? Yeah. 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 It's... No, it's not called the, the gutturals. Raise, raise, raise. No. Well, sometimes, yes. Sometimes. It is five, oh, it's five of them. You're right. Is is olive, mm -hmm. iron, hay, het, and sometimes race. Okay. Those are the, uh, the five gutturals. The gutturals never appear with a de guess forte or lean a. Okay, so a guttural can never be done. And the sound of a guttural can never be done, uh, can, can, uh, can never be hardened or softened. Okay, because the de guess lean a only appears in the de guess lean a only appears in Begad capet letters. Okay. And they can only appear in begad capet letters at the beginning of a word. And the guest lean A only hardens the word, the sound. It doesn't double it. So the five gutturals, olive, iron, hay, het, and race, will never appear with a dot or the guest. The guest forte or the guest lean. Now we know that final hay can have a matthew. It's not a de guest. It is a dot. It looks exactly like a de guest, but it's called a mappe. And you will only see that at the end of a word in final hay. And it just simply means to pronounce the hay. Normally final hay is not pronounced. But with a map, it, 
you go ahead and pronounce it. Mm -hmm. Okay? It says, the Degas Forte, devil is the letter in which it appears. Gutturals can never have a, uh, can never have also a vocal Shiva, only a silent Shiva. So anytime you see a guttural under, uh, I mean, anytime you see a guttural and a Shiva up under, it is always going to be silent. Okay, that's just another, another little rule. Something that I have here in my notes. Let me read one. Every syllable must begin with a consonant and contain only one vowel. Accented syllables are called tonic and usually occur at the end of a word, unless marked. A syllable can end in a vowel, you know, called open, or a consonant called closed. In begad kapat letters, a dagesh is forte. If preceded by vowel. Okay? So in other in order to have a Degesh forte, it has to be preceded by vowel. This word shamma, does it qualify? Yes, it's preceded by a vowel. The ming is preceded by the vowel kumas. You got, you know, something that we haven't mentioned. When we're reading Hebrew and we look at the consonant and we look at the vowel under the consonant, the consonant is occurring first and the vowel is second. And then if the next consonant has a vowel under it, it's like, uh, for instance, with this, it is uh, sheen, quamax, mem, quamax. That's the order. All right, and you have to remember that because you have to go backwards and forwards in this. Okay, so it can only the word is only a degas forte if it is preceded by another vowel. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Say so degas forte will occur in the following, which will be studied when they are occurred in the middle of the article. Vowel the second is this. Something we're going to get to a little later. Um, we are uh, okay. Only one of the above will ever occur with a dot, and that is hey with a mappy. Point three four. Only one of the above, talking about the, the five guttles, will will ever occur with a dot in it, and that letter is hey. A dotted hey or a mappy at the end of a word indicates that it should be pronounced. Okay. So all you have to do is just remember when you see a dot in the middle of a word, you're going to um, double it if it is preceded by a vowel. If it's not preceded by a vowel, what does that mean? It means if, if it's not preceded by a vowel, it has to be preceded by a consonant in a, a closed syllable, okay? And you cannot have a degesh forte. So that means if you see a mem with a dot in it, you won't see a mem with a dot in it. Actually, is what, what it means. It won't happen, okay? All right. Now, let's go on and we'll wrap this up. This will be pretty close, like I say, the last basic lesson. Let's talk about conjunctions and inseparable prepositions. You don't have that page, right? I, start, I started to include it, and I'm going to tell you to go ahead and add it to the website, but I'll just read it to you. It says, it says, It gives the, the word vav, yo, he, va. Okay. And it says, um, and it was, or, and it came to pass. The consonant vav at the beginning of a word means and, no matter which vowel is used with it. The consonant or letter vav 
at the beginning of a word means and. It doesn't matter which vowel is used with it. Okay? So, it's called a preposition. And it's separable. It'll be right smack up next to the word. And it always mean and. And then the, the, the word that follows it, you, you uh, pronounce that word or read that word, interpret that word. Okay, and just talking about roots, we'll go over that later. Really, all, all we have to do the conjunctions, the conjunction uh, vowel and or, ordinarily has the Shiva, but it also may appear. There's a, a way we'll put this page on there. The letter bait at the beginning of a word means in, with, by, or at. So every time you see the letter vav, you say and. It means and. This is a separate pre preposition. Every time you see the letter bait, it means in, with, by, or at. Every time you see the, the letter lamet, it means to or for. To something or for something. Every time you, this is at the excuse me, I'm saying every time, every time you see these letters at the beginning of a word, okay? If you see a vav at the beginning of a word, it means and. Right, you got that. Always. Okay. If you see the letter bait at the beginning of a word, it means in, with, by, or at. Every time you see the word, not the word, I keep saying word. Every time you see, I'm going to begin, I'm starting. Every time you see the letter vav at the beginning of a word, it means and. Every time you see the letter bait at the beginning of a word, it means in, with, by, or at. Every time you see the letter lamet at the beginning of a word, it means to or for. Every time you see the letter cough, at the beginning of a word, it means as, like, or according to. Okay? So really, you just had your first vocabulary lesson. Okay. You know, you know that uh, uh, and is the letter, you know, vav means at, at the beginning of a word, you know, it means and, and in, and by, with, okay? Now. There is one that we haven't mentioned. It is whenever you see hey at the beginning of the word, usually it's going to be hey with a pata up under it. Whenever you see hey at the beginning of the word with a pata, it means the. The. So we have it now. The. H A. That's your first vocabulary lesson. Okay? Now you can read and pronounce Hebrew. Okay? You should have with these lessons that you study them. And really what you need to do now, you're going to have to practice. Right. You're just going to have to see words and apply these uh, rules that you've learned in these five lessons. Okay. Now, let's uh, let's look at one word. Um, let's look at uh, Eretz. Eretz. Anyone know what Eretz means? Um, earth. earth. Right. It is spelled Aleph, Resh, and it has a, a, a final side. Okay, now it's um, under the olive is a sigo, under the resh is a sigo. Eretz, eretz, eretz. That you know, the olive is, solid, is silent, so it sounds like you're saying E R E T Z, eretz, with a spell olive, resh, sadi, or final sadi. Eretz. Now, as I said, that word is spelled Aleph, Reish, Final Sadi. 
Now, if we read that word in Hebrew, we might see it spelled this way. Bait, olive, rage. Final side. How would you, how, not so much how would you pronounce it, but what does it mean? Bait, olive, rage, final side. Bait is the, right? No. Bait is not the? No. In. Right. That's right, in. In the earth. So we have the in earth. In the earth or in the land. In the land. Usually in the Bible is going to mean in the land, not in the earth. Okay. Because okay? it has that inseparable preposition meaning in, in the, All right. in the earth. Like the okay. Like bear a sheep, you have you have the bait in the beginning. Right. Where sheep means beginning. The bait means in or in the, in the beginning. Bear a sheep. Okay. All right, just that quick uh, lesson, you know, with that. And that ends our basic lessons uh, teaching you how to read and pronounce Hebrew. Okay? okay. So we're going to say Shabbat Shalom. We're going to immediately go into Havilah, uh, stop the recording.